Number 41. For a given amount of gas showing ideal behavior, draw labeled graphs of, and then we have letter A. So we have to draw basically the graph of what's going on between the variation of pressure with volume. And this gas has ideal behavior. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a lovely little axis here. Here's my graph. And generally, if you do have pressure with volume, volume would be the uh, independent axis, meaning that it would be on the x-axis. And the pressure would be the dependent, and that would go on the y-axis. OK, now in order to figure out what's going on here, we have to look at uh, the ideal gas law, right? And that's this one, PV equals NRT. Now all we have to do is just isolate what, what's going on with pressure and volume. Now if I notice that here they are, P and V are right here. And what we do notice is that basically they're in the same numerator, right? If I just do this over one, pressure and volume would both be in the numerator. So that means if these two multiplied by each other is equal to something, if pressure increases and it has to equal some value, what's going to happen to the volume? Yes, yeah, since they're in the same numerator, if pressure goes up, the volume has to come down and vice versa. If the pressure decreases, the volume has to come up to compensate so that it still equals the same value. This idea is telling me that pressure and volume are indirectly related. So there's an indirect relationship between pressure and volume. So now they're just saying what's going to happen with pressure and volume. If we wanted a linear graph, we needed to show an indirect relationship. But since they just said pressure, and they just said volume, and they didn't say 1 over P and V. This is showing indirect relationship. This would give us the straight line down because it's an indirect relationship. But now we're trying to talk about a direct relationship that's not direct. It's indirect. Whenever this problem happens, this is when you're not going to get a, a linear line. You're going to get a hyperbola. And maybe I'll just write that down. Hyperbola. So when the information that they're telling you is not going with the actual uh, relationship, you have to draw hyperbola. And a hyperbola looks like this. It's like kind of like an exponential idea in which it will go like this and slope down. Or maybe I'll make it a little bit less dramatic. Or maybe I'll just do it in blue. Something like, oh my goodness, something like this. That's nice. But the idea is that it's not a linear line. And that's it. That's all you had to draw. Pretty simple, right? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much. And uh, there's a few more questions for this type. So hang, hang tight if you want to see letter B. And I'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.